students welcome to SST so simple tutorial in the previous class we read the classification of economic activities as primary secondary and tertiary on the basis of nature of work these three sectors produce a large number of goods and services now it is important to know how much goods and services are produced by each sector and how many people are working in each sector today we will discuss how do we count the various goods and services and know the total production in each sector. To begin with, let us assume that 200 bites were produced in the last year. 10,000 kg of wheat was also produced last year. Likewise, many other goods and services were produced. So how to compare the production? How can we add bites with wheat? So here, economists suggest that the value of the goods and services be added. How do we find out the value? In the above case, if the bike costs rupees 40,000, the total value of the bikes produced will be 40,000 into 200, that means rupees 80 lakhs. Similarly, if wheat sells at rupees 20 per kg, then the value of wheat will be 10,000 into 20 is equal to 2 lakh. Similarly, the value of all the goods and services in the three sectors are calculated and added up. Before I proceed further, I would like to discuss before you two new terms. The first is final goods and the second is the intermediate goods. See, Final goods are ready for use. They are directly consumed by the consumers and are not meant for further production or processing. For example, a pen. You buy it and start writing. Another example is, say, biscuit. You open the wrapper and start eating. It is not processed further for making anything else. Let us now understand intermediate goods. Suppose there is a biscuit company. So, to make biscuits, it purchases flour, that is atta, oil and sugar. Here, biscuit is a final good, but flour, sugar and oil are intermediate goods. So, intermediate goods are used up in the production of final goods. But, we must be cautious here. If you buy an atta bag, to make chapati in your house, then atta is a final good. But the same atta bag is bought by the biscuit company to make biscuit, atta becomes an intermediate good. I hope you have understood these terms. Let us come back to our topic. We are talking about counting. So while counting, care must be taken to count only final goods and services. We should not count intermediate goods. Why? To understand this, let us see this example. A farmer sells wheat to a flour mill at rupees 8 per kg. The mill grinds the wheat and sells the flour that is atta to a biscuit company for rupees 10 per kg. The company then uses flour and other things like sugar and oil to make biscuits. <coughs> the company <coughs> the company then sells biscuit to the customer for rupees 60 in this example the value of final goods that is the biscuit already includes the value of all the intermediate goods that are used in making the final good underline this sentence in your book come to page 22 comparing the three sectors Last paragraph, why are only final goods and services counted? In contrast to final goods, goods such as wheat and wheat flour in this example are intermediate goods. Intermediate goods are used up in, the, in producing final goods and services. The value of final goods already includes the value of all the intermediate goods that are used up, that are used in making the final good. Ok, done. Have you underlined? Ok. The value 60 rupees includes the value of wheat that is rupees 8. The value of flour that is rupees 10. 
so to count the value of flour and wheat separately will not be correct because then we would be counting the same thing a number of times thus the value of final goods and services produced in each sector during a particular year provides the total production of the sector in that year if we add the production in the three sectors that is primary secondary and tertiary we get what is called gross domestic product also called gdp so gross domestic product is the value of all final goods and services produced within a country during a particular year you may be asked what do you mean by the term gdp so take your pencil and underline come to page 23 first column second paragraph last sentence it is the value of all final goods and services produced within a country during a particular year gdp shows how big the economy is in india the task of measuring gdp is undertaken by the central government ministry let us now come to a small sub topic historical changes in sectors again this is in page number 23 if we see the history of many developed countries now we find that at initial stages of development primary sector was the most important sector of economic activity as the methods of farming changed and agriculture sector began to prosper it produced much more food than before many people now shifted to other activities such as trading transportation administration etc however at this stage most of the goods produced were natural products from the primary sector and most people were employed in this sector that is primary sector only in the next stage secondary sector emerged as the most important sector for production as well as employment new methods of manufacturing were introduced factories came up and started expanding those people who had earlier worked on farms now began to work in factories in large numbers people began to use many more goods that were produced in factories at cheap rates this means that the importance of the sectors changed finally in an advanced industrial economy there was a rapid shift towards the service sector during this phase the tertiary sector has overtaken the primary as well as the secondary sector in terms of total production and the major production of working population is engaged in service sector in other words the evolution the evolution of an economy follows three stages of transformation primary to primary or agricultural economy to industrial economy to commercial economy this is the general pattern observed in the developed countries you can be asked this question explain the pattern of change that has taken place between sectors in the developed countries once you have understood this you can write it nicely with this i finish the topic planned for today in the next class we will discuss the total production and employment in the three sectors in india till then keep reading have a nice day thank you